Hi, I'm Dr. Sean Mulvaney with the Stellate Institute, and I'd like to talk to you about um, some questions we have about stellate ganglion blocks for post-traumatic stress disorder. One of the questions is, why the right side versus the left side, or why both? And it's a great question. Our initial research and our initial studies that we published uh, on this, and we've published now over 13 papers on stellate ganglion block for PTSD, and I've talked about this on, in multiple national formats, what we see is all our initial research, we felt that it was the right side that we needed to do. So we published and said, hey, this is where it seems to be working best when you do a right-sided stellate ganglion block. Over the course of time, almost serendipitously, we found out that some people only respond on the left-hand side. And I'll tell you, it's a short story. It was a person I had trained to do stellate ganglion blocks, and they said, they let me know. They said, hey, I should let you know this. Uh, there was a person I did their right-sided stellate ganglion block, and they looked like a good candidate, but they didn't get better. So the next day I did their left-sided stellate ganglion block, and they got better. And I said, I didn't train you to do that. They said, I know, but they got better. Well, at the time I was in the military and I was in a command where I'd had several people that hadn't gotten better with a right-sided stellate ganglion block, and these were very reliable people. And it, it made, left me puzzled, like, why wouldn't they get better? So I called those people up, I brought them in, and we repeated it, this time doing a left-sided stellate ganglion block. And when we did that, we had the dramatic positive improvements that we normally see. So I said, huh, I wonder what this number is. Well, in our guidelines that we published in 2015, we put if the right-sided block doesn't work, consider a left-sided block. But it took us several years later of collecting data till we saw that, hey, there are, and we published this paper, um, in the medical literature where we showed that about one in 20 people only respond on the left side. But in parsing out that number, we also saw another phenomenon, which is that most people have inputs from both sides. So even if they respond well on the right side, there's still more juice for the squeeze. There's still more benefit to be had by adding the left. Another factor came up and which is one of them was initially, of course, a lot of people in the military had also had an element of traumatic brain injury. And they asked, do you think this helps with traumatic brain injury? And for the first 10 years, I said, no, I don't, I don't think it's helpful. And a lot of the, if you look at the, the Venn diagram where, the, where all the symptoms kind of overcross, there's a lot of crossover between traumatic brain injury symptoms and PTSD symptoms, but some of them are much more unique, like um, headaches, much more in the traumatic brain injury category, or mind fog, much more in the traumatic brain injury category. And so initially I said, no, I don't think I see an effect in the, in the layer cake of pathology that we're dealing with here. I see the PTSD symptoms improving, not so much with the, with the TBI symptoms. Then as we started doing more and more, uh, and a very important thing is the right side and the left side block should be done on different days. And that's because 15% of people will get a hoarse voice when you do an SGB. And that's from uh, kind of a, it's not a mistake, it's inadvertent numbing of the, a nerve called the recurrent laryngeal nerve that goes through the voice box, the larynx. And it can give you a feeling like <clears throat> there's something in the back of your throat or it can make your voice hoarse. And what's happening is if we're, if we're now looking down the trachea at the vocal cords, so right now my vocal cords are moving in and out just like this. Well, kind of a design flaw, I think. When they become paralyzed on one side, when it gets numb on one side, the vocal cord actually paralyzes in the closed position. Well, if that were to happen on both sides, that would be true airway distress, and that is not what we want for our patients. By doing them on two different days, we introduce an element of safety, because a single vocal cord getting temporarily paralyzed for a couple of hours will give you like this hoarse voice or feeling in the back of your throat, but it will not interfere with your ability to breathe or swallow. But if it was on both sides, it could be true distress. That's why we have to do them on different days. Now, getting back to when we started doing both the right and left side, we started seeing something that we didn't see before. And we've been doing this now for several years where people uh, would you know, ask to have the right and the left side done, either because they had traveled a long way or, and most folks, we did the right side, they were feeling a lot better, and then we did the left side and they felt even better. The folks with TBI, we started reporting, my headaches are going away, my mind fog is going away. And so we said, hmm, there's something to this. So for our patients now, and this is something that needs to be studied and published. This is, at this point, this is what we call in medicine anecdotal. This is experts, and I've done over 3,000 cellular ganglion blocks at this point and followed my patients. What we see is that this is, looks like it's very promising for people that have both traumatic brain injury and TBI, but that's 
initial. Now our data for treating uh, post-traumatic stress disorder with stellate ganglion block is very strong. And there's over, at this point, 21 papers in the published medical literature. Anyway, that's why you'll be offered a right side and a left side. Thank you for your attention. I hope this helps. Bye.